Hi, I'm Shannon Pakoulis and I'm here with Justin Watts. How are you today, Justin? I'm doing great. I'm uh, really enjoying this weather today, being from Toronto and all, it's pretty cold uh, out there. What do you think about being in Florida here for spring training? Oh, I mean, it's great. I come from Ohio. The day I left, it was negative 15 degrees and a foot of snow hit the ground. So it's nice to see this weather, see some water, you know, get out to the beach on days off. And it's nice to be in this warm weather. For sure. So you didn't start pitching until 2013. Uh, why did you make that uh, transition? Um, actually, I hit a random growth spurt. I was 5'8", 180 pounds going into junior college. Um, within two months or so of being there, I sprouted up to be 6'3", and put on a little weight. And my arm got better, so struggled hitting a little bit, you know, not going to lie. But So they decided to make that move, and it ended up being the right move. What were some of the struggles you had to face making that transition? Um, the first struggle was the first two months of becoming a pitcher. I had Tommy John uh, right away off the bat. Uh, so I lost a lot of uh, my scholarships and stuff like that, the schools I wanted to go to. Um, but other than that, was just like learning the game that way, you know. I mean, I always knew what to throw and when to throw it, but it was learning how to throw it, you know. Um, really becoming a pitcher and understanding my mechanics and stuff like that and understanding the game off that point of view. Yeah. What works for you as a pitcher? Um, you know, I just trust in myself. Uh, I always trust in myself, um, use what I have, and... I mean, that's what it all comes down to is knowing who you are as a person and who you are on the mound. Mm -hmm. So were there any standout moments for you being in Vancouver? Uh, yeah, um, I guess like, you know, when you get to close out a game there. Um, so close game, you know, crowd really gets into it. They have a great crowd, great uh, people right behind us and stuff like that. It was awesome. So when you get to close that game out there and the crowd goes crazy and the music comes on and that's the ball game team comes running out there for you that's probably one of the greatest moments yeah I know in Vancouver the fans are pretty crazy they're loud there's a lot of them how does that how does that make you play uh in a in a better way almost out on the field I love that um I would rather have the more people and the louder than I would a quiet place or something like that because that helps me lock in it helps me really focus on what I have to do because I have to block them out if I don't have noise and stuff like that then you know you can get away from really having to focus on blocking people out and stuff like that but I love the feeling of having a great fan base behind you and really showing that they care and love for you guys and I mean it just makes you help want to play better and want to win for them what were your goals going into uh, playing for Vancouver I'm um, really to establish myself, um, establish myself on the mound, really establish who I am and uh, really get that four pitch rotation down and be ready to come in for another year. Um, it was just, uh, it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but um, I feel like I got a good move on what I really need to do for these next upcoming, this next upcoming year. And uh, it was a great help out there. Do you feel like you accomplished some of those goals? Yeah, I do. Um, I feel like I had uh, the year I really wanted to have and the year I needed to have out there uh, to come into the spring training and move on from there. Um, so I feel like it was a pretty good accomplishment out there. Was there anything that you kind of regret or something that you would take back? Uh, no, I can't. I can't say. I'm not a big person to regret things, you know. I make a decision to make a decision. Um, if I regretted it, then I wouldn't be who I am and where I am today. And do you have any goals this upcoming season? Yeah, um, I mean, just to keep moving forward with pitching, um, to really, now that I have that four-pitch rotation, really take it to the next level to make it play everywhere, you know? Um, not be able to really, I know who I am now as a pitcher, so I really want to um, take that um, and really show them that I, who I am, you know? Not just me know who I am. What's your best pitch? Uh, I would have to go with my slider. Okay, yeah, uh, everybody says fastball should be your best pitch, but yeah. I like to throw the slider. Yeah. Sliders are a bit complicated, aren't they? Like you have to twist your arm in a certain way. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Well, um, is there anyone in your life that maybe helped you out in uh, in your path? Yes, uh, my grandfather. Um, my d dad never really played baseball. My mom was a great athlete in softball and stuff like that, but. Uh, when it came down to baseball, he was the man who taught me how to hit, how to throw. He spent countless hours with me in the backyard pitching to me, um, took me to the baseball games. We grew up watching every Indians uh, from Ohio. So, yeah. you know, we were Cleveland Indians fans. But uh, we uh, he, 
every day I was over there, we sat and watched the Indians game if it was on, you know, or watched some kind of baseball. So, I mean, he was the biggest influence and still to this day, he still pushes me, calls me and says, hey, you need to get going, you need to do this. And I'm like, all right, like, you know, like, I'm like, hey, I'm already here. I don't need your, like, need you to tell me what to do anymore. But yeah. I like it, though, you know, it still shows that he cares and he still mm -hmm. wants to influence me. And I think it's good to have those people in your life who care about you, who really want to push you and see you succeed. So that's pretty awesome that you do have that. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't thank him enough. I mean, there's no no amount I could give to him back, you know, for what he's done for me. Yeah. Well, if he's watching this, he says thank you. <laughs> um, and was there any real low uh, point in your career? Yes. Um, definitely when you go back to college and have the Tommy Johns and uh, – not really knowing how to pitch and not putting up the numbers I needed to to get drafted right away. But, you know, what's what's a career without low points, you know? And first year uh, in the GCL was a struggle, you know? You, you come to pro ball thinking, like, you're going to get a bunch of fans and you're going to get to go places. Well, you come to GCL and there's five people there and they're scouts. Yeah. Um, so you're on your own um, and you're kind of doing things on your own. So um, it was a low part, but, you know, the fact that you can make it through those little parts and get to know who you are truly as a person and as a baseball player at that point really shows like what you can do when you get to a place that has everything you want. Yeah. And how did you individually get over those low points, like mentally or physically? Uh, the mental game of baseball. Um, a big shout out to Adam Bernero, who isn't with us any longer. He's with the Mariners organization, but he really taught me the mental side of baseball. Really showed me that baseball isn't just physical and it's not just throwing a fastball by somebody. It's how you carry yourself on and off the field, how you carry yourself in the locker room, um, and how you carry yourself within your own body uh, mentally. Um, just knowing, like I said, going back to just knowing who you are. Uh, don't ever try to be somebody else. You got to be who you are. I spoke with Johnny Sellers. He's also uh, here at spring training with you guys. And he did talk a lot about becoming a man and how that does help with baseball. Do you find like just uh, transi transitioning sorry, into, into a man, does that help you as an athlete? Yeah. Um, this is a place where you have to really become a man. Um, so in college, like, you had people kind of hold your hand, coaches where they wanted to make sure you got things done, stuff like that. Here you have all the help you need, but you have to go ask for it. You have to accomplish things yourself. You have to take accountability for yourself. And when you be, when you realize those things and you start to do them on your own, that's when uh, you start to become a man. And I mean, that's when you can start taking your game to the next level. Yeah. So I agree with him 100%. Yeah. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, thank you for the interview. Well, thank you. Great job. Thank you. Well, good luck with your season. You did a great job. So yeah, thanks so much. <laughs>